Okay, I've gotten through pretty much all of the Milwaukee individual tools, and now we need to dig into batteries. And what better way to dig into batteries than to have a battery expert to help me sort of get through this instead of me fumbling through it. We're gonna get some proper information. So Ben from the Battery Innovation Center, I kept saying committee <laughs> in all of the videos. Um, he's the CEO of the, of, is it a company? It's a nonprofit? Tell me a little bit about what you do and why what you have to tell us matters. Yeah, we're, uh, we're actually a public-private nonprofit uh, started by uh, the state of Indiana, the local county, Greene County, uh, where we sit there in Newberry, along with a, a bunch of pri private companies at the time, Cummins, Caterpillar, Eli Lilly. We had some academic partners, Purdue, IU, uh, Penn State, and others that kind of came together for, as they advance the battery world, where do we have a playground, a skunk works, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, to go advance battery tech in a, in a kind of a behind closed doors, but a collaborative environment. Um, so that's how we came about. But we are a nonprofit because we are a fee for service. So we do work for others. We don't do our own work. Mm -hmm. We develop, we basically take your tech that you've done once and we replicate it. Or if you can't figure it out, we help you figure it out. So we're helping bring, you know, game changing battery technology to the market uh, from a commercial perspective. And all types of batteries. Not all types just of batteries. Portable, but car batteries. Power tools, drones, yeah. cars, uh, yeah, uh, cell phones laptops, all the way to trains and grid storage. So yeah. everything you can think of. So before we dig into the product line here, which is what this video is about, make sure to go check out our other videos. We're gonna make some other battery generic, if you will, videos um, while he's here this week. Um, but so this is gonna be Milwaukee specific. Tell me about what's in these. Like what what is inside of this <laughs> thing? How does that work? Sure. Well, um, so, you know, just like the other power tool companies, you know, Milwaukee, as we think about the battery evolution of power tools, it used to be a very simple battery that's inside there. Most of the time it was a NICAD is what everybody's probably used to. Um, some of you viewers, if you're young enough, don't remember NICADs, but NICAD was really where we started with just a battery and wiring. So it was a DC source, you know, a chemistry, electrochemical mm -hmm. um, that, uh, that provided the power. Today, virtually all the power tools you're going to get are going to have a, a lithium ion. So that's the most prominent. There's lots of different variants. Um, you know, people hear of lithium and there's lithium metal, which is a non-rechargeable variant. And then there's uh, lithium polymer uh, or uh, lithium ion. That means it's rechargeable. So that is what you're going to see in any rechargeable grade. So, you know, lithium metal looks very similar to what's in your coin cell, you know, like what's in your key fob or, you know, some of those throwaway portable devices. But a lithium ion uh, is a chargeable. So, and in the power tool today, um, there's, there's some other variants, but uh, typically they've defaulted to kind of what I'll call the Sony standard, um, you know, is the, is the 18650. So this is uh, a cylindrical cell, that's the format that's used, um, is an 18650, which it's 18 millimeters in diameter by 65 millimeters in length, so the 18650. Um, and that, that cell is what has made up uh, power tools, laptops, cell phones, uh, some cell phones that were bigger at the time. Um, this format is the industry standard. In fact, uh, if you would tear apart a Tesla Model S uh, or uh, one, of the, um, one of the early Teslas, um, their models still today carry a cylindrical. It's a little bigger, but they also use 18650. So these so are just lined up? Thousands of them. Seven, seven to over 9,000 in the bottom of the car. It looks like a skateboard made out of these with some wheels on. So what's in here? So, yeah, what's inside of this is, uh, so this is a cylindrical. That's the format, obviously a cylinder. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's inside of it is what we call a jelly roll, and that is, that's the nickname for it. Um, it used to, there's also another term, they called it a chubby, but they've gotten away from calling it a chubby now, and it's probably not politically correct anymore. Um, but that is, that actually is the electrodes. So that is your positive and negative um, that is inside of the cell. Uh, in this case, a cylinder, it's all wound up. So um, a cylindrical cell, uh, it looks, uh, think of kind of a hostess ho-ho roll. If you remember, you had kind of the chocolate and the cream so and the cake. So this would be a big sheet. That's right? correct, yep. And then they roll it in place, but what's, so this is lithium metal? So um, there is there is not lithium metal inside of those. There is a, there's a lithium polymer. So that's um, there's all kinds of different variants. And that specific chemistry that you're going to see in Milwaukee is what's called NCA. Uh, so it's a nickel cobalt aluminum oxide. What's, that's what the aluminum stands for. So the full name is lithium nickel cobalt aluminum oxide. NCA is the short name that you'll hear for the chemistry, which is a, a high power, high capacity uh, style technology. So it's it's one of the variant that's out there. There's LFP, lithium iron phosphate, which is iron based. Um, there's NMC, nickel manganese cobalt. 
Um, there's um, uh, there's lithium sulfur. There's a lot of different bins. There's lithium germanium. So there's no liquid in here. There is. Um, there is, but it's not the traditional liquid you'd see in like an old battery. Like you were so used to a battery, you know, <laughs> as it gets older, then you get the crusty sure. right, that, that gets all over the place. But this this type of battery doesn't have that. No. So, well, it, it does. Um, but what it has is, so we take this jelly roll and we produce this jelly roll. Or in the case of a pouch cell, instead of being wound up, it's, you know, it's layers that go inside of a pouch cell. This is mm. a pouch or a, you know, it goes into a, you know, a pouch cell. Um, into that format, so like what's in a cell phone or in some, a lot of your other variants use a, uh, that's not a standard by the way, there is no standard pouch cell, there is a lot of standards when it comes to cylindrical. Mm -hmm. But we take this, we actually put it into the case and before we put the top on, we fill it with electrolyte. So there is a liquid in there, okay. but the intent is if it's done properly, that lick, it's very much similar to an AGM, if you've heard of an advanced glass mat, mm -hmm. if you've ever taken one of those apart, there's no free electrolyte or liquid in there, it's soaked. Okay. And that's the same thing, this becomes the sponge. So um, the separator, which is in between the positive and negative, okay. that soaks up all the electrolyte. So it's made to be, quote unquote, a dry cell once it's put together. So mm -hmm. there is liquid in there, but it's liquid trapped, if you will, uh, inside of there. So in other words, there's a bunch of these in there. Nah. Okay. <laughs> so if you have all the science and technology for your eggheads out there. So, so, so let's start with a 12 volt ecosystem. Um, what makes it 12 volts? How do we get, is it how many of these and how they're wired series and parallel? Is it that simple on That's how correct. we get a specific voltage output? And then, and then you're, you get a higher amperage rating by adding more of them? Is that how it works? You are correct, yeah. Um, you, uh, to get to the voltage, that series, uh, and then to get to the capacity, the energy that we need is, uh, is parallel. So all batteries, specifically lithium ion, are rated in S and P. So there'll be so much series and so much parallel. So uh, in this case, what you'll see is the, you know, a lot of the batteries, they'll use a single series string to get to your base capacity, and then they'll just do parallels of those strings in order to build the overall capacity. So in layman's terms, let's say I had six of these in here. I could take three in series, three in series, and take those two and then put them in parallel and get a specific output. You have doubled the capacity in that effect. Yeah. Okay. Same voltage, double the capacity. So now there are three different versions of, let's say, the small, uh, what they call the CP series. So yep. there's CP 1.5s, there's CP 2.0s, and there's CP 3.0s. Now these all have the same footprint, right? So these are all the same size, same, I think they're the same weight. They feel like it. Uh, Pretty close, yeah. So is the only difference in how there are these three, because it looks to me like there's three 18650s in this one cartridge, right? So that, great question. So that depending on what you're doing on the power tool line, yes, you can put them in parallel, but again, keep in mind um, 18650s look similar to AA batteries. There are different voltages, but frankly, in an alkaline battery, whether you buy an alkaline or a mercury-based battery, or some of the sodium, the older batteries. You know, if you go and buy a double A, some don't last longer than others. That's because there's better grades, there's better capacity. Mm -hmm. So if you look, the way they do the CP batteries, it's still um, single parallel, but they're putting better batteries. So they're all 18650 in size, but the actual amp hour capacity of the battery is better. Therefore, higher, uh, higher capacity. So they're putting, today what you would see is the I don't want to say the old series, but the older series um, are going into the lower capacity. And as they get better, um, better electrode technology, it makes the same cell higher capacity. Are they doing that by simply adding more windings inside? Um, it tighter? More windings, um, better coatings, better control of those coatings. So the, the uh, electrode layers, the, uh, the electrochemical layer that we lay down, mm -hmm. um, a, a piece how that kind of works Sony perfected this technology for folks that remember the high definition tape. If you remember tape and cassette tapes, uh, you know, DV8s, VHR, VHS, that was plastic with magnetic, um, you know, particles that are a paint. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's basically a glorified paint coating that's put down on there. We do the same thing. So by refining that coating along with the number of layers, along with the number of winds, we can get higher voltage and or higher capacity or higher power. So is it likely that these are all wired the same internally? They are exactly the same on that but series. But they have a different 18650. That is correct. Okay. So you would see, um, if you look in an 18650, they go in capacity, you know, general ones you can buy maybe 14, 1500 milliamp hours. Mm, yeah. So 1.4 amp hours, 
um, all the way to some of the, I mean, emerging tech today, we have some that are uh, 4.2, 4.3 milliamp hours in the same physical <coughs> size when you get to this outer package. Okay. That makes sense then. So these are wired the same internally. Correct. These will all also have a, a, a smart chip or a circuit board, if you will, that uh, monitors heat and capacity and Correct. charging, discharging and all of that. So from a pricing standpoint, just to kind of cue you guys in, so you have 1.5 batteries are 49 bucks, 50 bucks, and then 59 bucks, and then 69 bucks. You know, Milwaukee's pretty smart <laughs> at this, this whole marketing game. So, so the, and then they also sell, in, in this line they sell, which is the best bang for the buck, it's 79 bucks for two CP1.5, so they do sell a two pack of this. So let's say all things being equal for getting price, are you always going to want a 3.0? I mean, if you had the choice on your tool, what do you think? Um, as a battery guy, yes, because the advantage of that additional capacity is I'm not working as hard. So um, the, even, even though we're not paralleling the cells, um, think of uh, weak and strong. Um, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not in the best shape right now lately. I've kind of let myself go. You, I know you've been working out lately again. You and I may be similar physical shape, but you can probably do more work than I can. Mm -hmm. So um, for you and I to go lift a bucket or do things, you have a higher capacity, therefore it's easier for you to do it. Mm -hmm. You're gonna run cooler, which is really good in batteries. Heat is the biggest killer of batteries today. Yeah. Um, number two is that degrades performance. So that impedance, so the resistance inside the battery starts to rise typically, uh, and that can cause other issues with the tool. So ideally you want in all, I mean, all things being equal, higher capacity ensures that you always have the most amount of capability to do the work. So if I brought a strong man in to lift any of this, he could do that easily without thinking where, you know, if I brought a, a feeble old lady in, she may have a hard time lifting some of this. Got so. It. so in this case where footprint and weight is virtually identical, a 3.0 battery is going to be, and now when we say 3.0, what are we saying? Three amp hours? Yeah, it's, they, they they give it an approximate range of three amp hour, correct? Got it, okay. So um, three amp hour would be 3,000 milliamp hours, which would be theoretically three of these in series, 3,000 milliamp hours in series? They derate them. So, I mean, just like Tesla, you don't ever get the full capacity use because okay. they want the batteries to last through so many cycles. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also know, depending on whether you're gonna fast charge or slow charge, that that can have an impact. So yeah, it's a, it's a three amp hour battery, but they, um, it's, it's not directly relevant back to the exact cell. They're derated intentionally so that you can ensure the overall life. Um, on, a, on a lithium ion cell, um, and this is you know, something we've all been programmed to do is we charge and discharge our cell phones and our cars and, and everything zero to 100% all the time. Uh, Milwaukee and others have gotten smart and realized that's hard on the number of life cycles. If you, if you do that on a lithium ion battery, you're talking about potentially only hundreds of cycles, maybe mm. less. Um, so they are actually letting you use a narrow range a smaller range of the so overall we're never capacity. Completely discharging this before and you're never fully, off. really fully charging. You're you're within the tolerance window so that you're always keeping it safe. It's just you know, just like the car, they never let you use everything that motor's capable of. You gotta tune to do that. Right. Yeah. 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 So got it. So now um, now we get into the discussion of weight, right? When we go to XC batteries. So uh, what are, what is the XC is extended charge? Is that what extended capacity. Extended, extended capacity. capacity. Yep, right. yep. And so we have three point oh's and they do a two pack. And then we have 4.0 and 5.0. And so now we're back into this game of these all being equal. <laughs> Would we rather have a 6.0 battery? 6.0 battery is 99 bucks and then 89 bucks and 79 bucks. So 10 bucks difference for each. So for my 20 bucks, am I gonna get my 20 bucks worth out of, a, out of the battery if I go bigger? Well, and here's, here's where it starts to maybe, uh, you know, diverge a little bit is when we think about single series, you're, you're definitely better. So single series, no parallel. So mm -hmm. these are, you know, 3, 4S, 1P in that configuration. Going with the best capacity gives you the best overall work. This goes to instead of having, you know, kind of, you know, weak man, strong man, or weak lady, strong lady, now, now I've got two guys. Um, yes, you still can kind of get the same thing stepping up through that series, but frankly, you've already got two people doing the work versus one person doing the work. So even a step up, if you can justify the weight, and obviously there's a little larger size, mm -hmm. we're now in parallel, you're gonna instantly have more work. Um, you're gonna have more capacity. What The differentiator here, so these, 
This will most likely, in almost all cases, with the right tools, fuels specifically, are going to give you the best. You're going to you're going to be able to get the best capability out of the tool by going this way. Mm -hmm. This one is more about how long do you want to use it. So, mm. do you want to go, you know, day or days, you know, hours, depending on how long you use it, versus maybe minutes, depending on that tool. I got you. So let me rephrase that. So if I'm using a CP 1.5, this one here, I may not get full output of the tool. Correct. If I go up to three, I'm going to get full output. So I've maximized. Most the, cases, yeah. In, in, in generalizing, yeah. but uh, if I have the highest capacity, you know, single series battery, I'm going to get uh, the most most work out of the tool. Uh, versus in this, so the tool's already kind of maxed out, if you will. Now I'm just getting extended life by having. Is it is it safe to say that this set of three batteries is in parallel to this set of three batteries, is that how it works? Um, I'm trying to remember the configuration there, but it is a it's still a series and parallel configuration. I believe they keep them all series and series and series, and then they tie those two strings together. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then this, because so so if this is a three amp hour and this is a three amp hour, what do you think? Are, are these are these have the same capacity? They're going to be pretty close. Uh, again, there's um, a as you get through the voltage curve, so as they discharge, you are going to find that um, as we draw current, you're going to be able to sustain voltage a little better with uh, again with the ex with the parallel. With more. So energy. it is. If you think about performance over duration, you'll keep up that performance over the duration. For so long. both at the beginning will give you. If you think of a curve, both are going to give you the same performance at the beginning. But as I use the tool, mm -hmm. the one that is you know. Uh, is a single parallel, 1P, is going to start to drop off sooner and my voltage is going to sag, therefore my performance is going to go down, where the other one will sustain, it'll stay on voltage higher, which keeps my performance longer and gives me capacity longer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So here's a question, you know, that, let's say, you know, a lot of the tools, like the tools will come with a, they'll come with a, uh, with a 3.0, yep. right? And, or they'll come with a 2.0. It's sort of the, the very few of the tools, some of the base Milwaukee's, the M M12s, not the M12 fuels, but pretty much all the fuels come with the, the CP 2.0. Yep. In your world, um, let's say you're buying, uh, you know, you're buying this uh, this surge, you know, uh, what is this? This is a 2551-20. You're buying this little impact tool. Um, would you buy it tool only and then buy yourself your own 3.0 <laughs> batteries to get the most out of it? You know, I got to be honest, you know, I, you know, Milwaukee's done a great job. I think they pair some good kits that get you going. Mm -hmm. uh, frankly, as a heavy battery user myself, um, there are times where, frankly, what comes along with the kit is nice to be able to walk over to a cabinet. Yeah. It's compact. Grab it. You know, you got to do, you know, short duration. You're going to throw it in a toolbox. You're going to take it out, work on the car, you know, do some small ones. If you know you're going to be kind of taking that tool with you for the day, um, more and more what I'm finding is I kind of started with some base batteries. Uh, I'm, I'm a heavy Milwaukee user. I've got others, but I'm very much a heavy Milwaukee user. Mm -hmm. I've got not as many tools as you picked up, but I got quite a few of them. Um, I have a, I've kind of catered my batteries. I know what's my like quick grab use, use for a few minutes. It's light and I know I can throw it in a bag, throw it in my pocket mm -hmm. you know, and use it. And then what are the ones that like, hey, if I want to be doing a project for the day, I don't want to go back to the charger. I don't want to have to change batteries at all. And then there's the ones that's like, hey, I know I'm really going to be using it. Um, you know, my saw and some of the others. I know mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm drilling concrete. I'm grabbing my big boy. A big battery, so, like so a big I'm, HD or something. I'm finding I, their kits are, I think, well put together. They do a good job. But I think once you get one or two batteries, you're going to find that you kind of custom your battery size by how do you routinely use mm -hmm. it. Yeah, so just to put it into perspective for you guys watching, I mean, you buy this tool. Uh, if you buy the tool only, it's I think it's like 100 and 129 bucks. If I buy just the tool as it sits like this, or it's 200 bucks for a kit with two 2.0 batteries, right? So I get two batteries and a tool, you know, and a case and a charger. The charger is what 60 bucks if you buy that alone. So I'm getting, if I were to buy it all a la carte, I'm getting you know three 350 400 dollars worth of stuff versus you know so so what you could do if you wanted to maximize the output of this device but keep it compact i mean these batteries are 70 bucks a piece 
So if I buy the tool only, I need to buy a charger, and I need to buy these batteries, it becomes much more costly to do it that way. Um, so my wager is, um, uh, what, I, what, what I'm guessing is that, you know, Milwaukee has sized this properly. Most of the time, yeah, they've done a great job of putting good kits. But if I'm buying, so the, I guess the big question is, so let's say that I stick with that, I'm going to buy some kits, I'm going to buy some tool onlys, but let's say I'm going to buy some fresh batteries, would you almost always suggest we go to the, you know, the highest capacity? That, that, that fits the, the footprint and weight we're looking to target. If you're gonna be a user that's, again, what I would say, knowing if you're buying Milwaukee, most of the time, they're a, I mean, they're a much higher line tool. They're a much, a much more uh, powerful tool. In fact, uh, probably one of the best today, if, if not the best, uh, for sure, including in their battery size. Yeah, starting with the kit, as you said, the kits are great values. Uh, and they really pair them up right. I mean, used to be they'd kind of throw some crappy batteries in, not Milwaukee, mm -hmm. but used to be tool kits, the batteries are crap, and to get the really good batteries, you, you had to go buy, buy them. Yeah. Now they've done a fantastic job. They've really evolved in making sure they provide the a great kit, battery, properly but, sized. Yeah. And then, yeah, for those, for those, uh, I'll call it power users or the more discerning mm -hmm. users, Look, yeah, yeah is, is finding the battery that really lets you optimize for your usage. Got it, got it. So what I'm intending to do likely, and I'm going to play with these more, more, but I'm intending to grab, you know, I'll probably buy a half a dozen or maybe two or three of the, the highest capacities of the variants. Uh, because if you have a bunch of their tools, you end up with a, a, a solid mix of the 1.5s, the 2.0s, 3.0s, yeah. and 4.0s. Uh, and then if you want to get, you know, some of the higher capacity stuff, this most of the tools don't come with these. Uh, and so maybe grab, you know, two or three of each of these so you have these for that, you know, instance where you know you're going to be using that tool all day or something like that. That, that might make sense to me. I'm going to help you along with this stuff by creating these packages and making suggestions as I have more and more time with this. Okay, so let's talk uh, to 18 volt. So I don't know that I'm clear on 12 volt versus 18 volt we're using the same battery. How do how do we how do how do they do that? How do they get a different uh, voltage output out of the same thing? More series, so just more more in series. So you've got more cells connected in series to get your higher voltage. Okay. So then um, these batteries become a bit more sophisticated, and now we have we have technically four different types. Actually, five. We have CP CP high output. We have XC, XC high output, and then we have HD. So we have four different types or four different lines of batteries. So it's safe to say that if you have a, an XC battery that I have the same cells that I have in a, an M12, right? Yeah, the, um, their compact battery and then their first stage up from there, the XCs are still, um, they're still a cylindrical and they're still an 18650. Where do we get to? Because this is a wider footprint, so I'm assuming that some of these, some of these uh, high output batteries, are they using a different type of type of internal cell? Great question. That's so that became the refinement. Um, so uh, Milwaukee uh, TTI, you know, as a parent company, has taken advantage of uh, a chemistry uh, or a, a cell uh, format evolution. So the 18650 has been the the standard. I won't use the gold standard, but the known standard for. Any person who wants a lithium ion battery, you can go anywhere and buy 18650s. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether those are used or brand new. Um, several of the manufacturers, Panasonic, Tesla was probably the most prominent, well known name associated with. How do we refine some of the, um, and I don't want to use disparities because I wouldn't want anybody to think the 18650 is terrible, but it does have some, uh, some disadvantages when it comes to thermal um, that they tried to sort out and create a better. They tried to maximize everything they could in a cylinder, mm -hmm. so they went to a 21700. So same to the 18650, it is 21 millimeters now mm -hmm. in diameter, 70 millimeters in length, so it's just slightly larger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can show you an example of that. It's not much bigger, but a little bit bigger, but they were able to uh, nearly double the capacity. So we're only slightly larger, just a, a moderate increase in the cylinder size but they were actually able through that to actually put a ton more inside of the jelly roll. Mm -hmm. So inside of the, the inner workings of that battery and they were also able to optimize the thermals. So we've gotten better capacity, it's still the same voltage, mm -hmm. but I've gotten better capacity, therefore much better uh, power capability uh, in a overall virtually same size cell. So okay. a minor increase, but you know, it's kind of like slapping a turbo on in the engine, all of a sudden you just got a ton more out of it, they kind of did that. How do they mm -hmm turbo that engine uh, to make it even more capable. So we have uh, CP, so in the same same basic idea where they rated it at 1.5 amp hour. So 
is an 18 volt battery at the same, what they're rating, 1.5 amp hours, does this have more capacity than a, than a, you know, than the 12 volt battery? In, how do we how do we reference that? What's the reference point here for for this? 18 volt versus 12 volt. From um, when you talk about in the voltage curve, if you look at the usage, yes, voltage to voltage, it has the same capacity. Now, if obviously on um, this actually has higher capacity, but that's relevant to the voltage. So, I mean, if you tried to rewire it as a 12 volt, it technically has more capacity. Because the tool is gonna require more wattage or power. That's right? correct, yes. Right, yeah. It. So it's wattage dependent. So an 18 volt uses higher wattage, therefore um, it, it is equivalent. So if you run effectively, you know, all things equal, uh, theoretically, the tool should run exactly the same amount of time on a 1.5 if I use it in a 12 volt versus an 18. I turn them both on the same time, they should last the same amount of time. Because the 18 volt, the 18 volt tool would be required, would be utilizing more, more power. That's correct. Yeah. Because it's theoretically be bigger and bulkier, heavier sort of thing. That's correct. Now let's say that we took a 12 volt specific, let's say the motors, because they look very similar and these are actually rated at the same output. So motor for motor, or electric motor for electric motor, you know, this 18 volt tool theoretically would last longer. Or you're saying should last identical? They should last identical. Yes, assuming should last same identical. capacity. That's now correct. these look like they has five. It looks like they may have five cells inside of here that looks that, about that size. Yes, they do. Uh, they go from a what is a three S uh, to a four S, or sorry, to a five S. And the same concept here. When we go up to a two point these are the same footprint, same size. This will likely have a a greater capacity internal greater capacity. cell. Yep. Uh, and then you have what they call the 3.0 high output. Um, these, again, look to be the same footprint, but just a little longer. So it looks to me as though they're just adding another cell to the to this. To this to actually, this. The, um, so on some of the series, what you'll see is the high outputs. They've actually swapped to the 21700s. Mm, okay. So that, that's, this is where the M18 and the M12 for now is a little different. They've really um, kind of done the 18650 has been kind of the mantra for the M12. M12. In order to gain the power on the M18, they've taken advantage of that more optimized 21700. Okay. So as you see the um, the high output versions, you're gonna see that they're using, again, series in parallel, but they've swapped to a higher or a mm. higher performance cell. And then they brand it as HO Correct. output. Yeah. So, and that's where they're saying it has 50% more output than the, you know, the, the equivalent um, um, the regular version. So most of the tools are gonna come with a 1.5 or a 2.0, and in order to get a hold of a 3.0, again, this is where you have to make that decision, <laughs> grab yourself a couple of 3.0s, have sitting in the cabinet in case. And the advantage, of course, of the CP series, just like in the 12 volt, is lighter weight. Yep. Smaller, more compact, if you're doing some short jobs you may not need a giant battery so pricing on these again the best bang for your buck is if you buy the you know the double pack you figure 75 bucks for a single cp 1.5 or 119 so you know pricing that's you know that's retail map pricing uh, the single uh, two two amp hours is four bucks more that's 74 to 79 uh, and then our uh, our 3.0 batteries, 100 bucks, 99 bucks, or 150. So, you know, if you, you're probably better off buying the two pack. They're they're clearly trying to convince you there. So now when we get into XC, XC has the same thing. Uh, it has um, the base XC, and these are probably the most common batteries, right? This is the ones that we all have, you know, 10 of, uh, <laughs> is the, uh, the most five common point, ones, yeah, the 5.0s. 5 5.0s, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so almost all the fuel stuff comes with 5.0s. Most of the non-fuel stuff comes with a 3.0. Um, these are sort of the standby, the the, the, the one that we, we buy most. These I've got are, a cabinet full of those. <laughs> these are 129 bucks a piece, and this is where the kits come in and become so useful. You buy these 129 bucks a piece versus, you know, you buy a two-pack for 229. A 10-pack is 1100 bucks. So believe it or not, they do have an $1,100 10-pack, which I now apparently own. So 3.0s are, uh, let's see, 3.0s are 100 bucks, 99 bucks for a single, 149 bucks. Then you have four, uh, what do we have? We have the 4.0, yeah, the 4.0 is 125, and then the 5.0 is 129 or 229 for two. And then we get into XCHO, just like what we talked about. So these likely have 
the bigger internal battery. Right? Yeah, there are 21700. There uh, uh, and there are more in parallel in there as well. So gotcha. And I, these aren't very common. There's a couple of tools. You know, I've got one sitting right there. I got a couple of tools that have come come with these. Um, but this is a six amp hour uh, an, an HO version of an XC battery. And so this is 149 bucks or 199 bucks for a two pack. Uh, and then they also make it in a eight amp hour. I believe XC8, so that's one 169. Now, disadvantage of this is weight. Well, is is, uh, only? is, uh, is extended capacity. Um, number two is uh, is temperature. So as you're getting in the high demand tools, mm -hmm. you think about uh, you know the the saws and the larger drain devices. Mm -hmm. um, that that helps cut the temperature of the battery. So um, again, we talked about it's going to give you longer duration of performance, but it's also going to make the battery last longer in those high drain. Got so it. you know your your general high um, you think about your really high torque, high demand tools, you know, the, the general drivers that the folks are using, I mean, one, you're not going to want to carry that weight. I guess you could, yeah. uh, but it's overkill. But you think about for the, you know, for the concrete users, for the power saws, um, for some of the really high drain devices, that lets you keep overall performance, uh, overall energy density or overall capacity to do work, but it also keeps your temperature down. So mm -hmm. it makes sure that those last longer. And I, I do know, at least in some cases, some of the biggest Milwaukee tools, again, the power saw and others, the have actually been optimized around the 9.0. And they'll specify yeah. that, hey, the 9.0 is actually, instead of maybe in these, you know, they, they cater the tool, the yeah. 5.0 may not actually give its full output. There are a few tools that you've got to have. Where I could take this and supercharge it. That's correct. And um, you know, they'll, they'll, I don't think Milwaukee publishes that spec, so it's trial and error. No, yeah, there's there, there are some tools that... Um, by swapping batteries, all of a sudden you pick up different ratings and performance. So. And most tools, they're smart, right? So there's the chipset, you know, inside of the tool as well as inside of the battery. Yeah, there's a tool and a battery management system that work together. So. And so if the tool senses that the battery has the capacity and the capa battery is communicating back saying, I have the capacity, then, you know, it may, you know, the, 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 it may wake up the tool a little bit. That's but correct. But you're going to add weight. And so then you have the two big boys. These are both the same price. So HD 9.0, HD 12.0 are both 200 bucks, 199 bucks a piece. So let's talk charging since we're here. And so they make like the standard charger that everything comes with is either that's the that's the travel kit is either this. I'm gonna create some space here, or this. All right. So most of the tools come with a 12 volt simple charger, or they come with a dual, dual 12 voltage, volt, 18 yeah. volt. They don't make just an 18 volt charger. They do make a dual 18 volt only charger, but they don't make just a you know a single 18 volt charger. So these take whatever time they take. But let's talk a little bit about charging, discharging, and, and what's a good practice. So lithium ion, <laughs> I've always understood it as you're better off keeping it charged. So run it down to whatever you run it down to and throw it on the charger. So like your cell phone, your, 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 your battery here. So correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I take this, I use it, I use one bar of the four bars and I go stick it on the charger, bring it up to full charge. And sometimes I'll leave it on there. It sits on there for days. So first question is what's best practice for maintenance charging on your lithium ion battery? Great question and kind of a common misconception. In fact, one that um, you know we've been trying to, uh, the industry frankly doesn't do a good job of it. And I think a lot of that is, you know, in some ways it, it can sell more batteries. It helps you turn more product. Uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't call it necessarily an evil by any means, but um, you know, we've all been kind of brought up on, even if you're not a lead acid person, that's the mindset that folks have is when I'm done with a battery, I charge it. You know, it should always be at the top of charge. In fact, on a lithium ion, that's actually one of the worst things you can do to it if you're not going to be using it. So the battery, um, it actually ages the, the aging characteristics. So temperature, so we talked about earlier about by using a battery that's a little undersized for the capability of the tool, mm -hmm. you can cause more heat. That is a degradation. That's a very quick degradation of the battery. In some cases, could be um, detrimental. If, if it's not controlled, you could actually have a battery going to thermal runaway. When we think about charging, um, that keeping it on the top of charge is nearly as bad as actually keeping it uh, warm, getting it hot all the time. Uh, the battery actually likes to live almost all the chemistries. And this is, you know, um, you'll probably have some of your folks comment and say, hey, he's wrong. It's 25 to 82% on this chemistry. But in general, kind of 20 to 80% on a lithium ion is the ideal. So, and, and again, there's some, there's some broad range there a little bit, um, on, or sorry, some fluctuation. 
Um, number two is how tools report. So obviously Milwaukee's, you know, is a is a pretty simple reporting system. That's not a percentage. It's it's four bars. What is one bar? To, is that is that eighty percent? Is that fifty percent? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you look at your cell phone today, it you know it has a bar. Some of them allow you to put a percentage, but ideally you want a tool between twenty or you want a battery between eighty and twenty and eighty percent while you're using it, and it's actually better to store it at a low state of charge. If you're not going to be using it for a while, uh, it's actually the best thing that you can do for that. So the, mm. the old adage of um, as an electrician, when we went back to the trucks at the end of the day with charge NICADs, them up, you yeah. charge them all up. That's what you had to do because yeah. otherwise you got memory in the battery and mm. it, it wouldn't it would lose life. It was actually worse for it mm. The lithium ion. That's why they're fast charge. That's why the capability is out there. When you go back to the truck or go back to your tools or go back to your bench for the day and put stuff up, you're better off to leave it at anything under 100 percent. Um, for storage. Now, long-term storage, you know, again, probably have some comments where folks will say, well, if I long-term store it, it'll drop. Yes, there is a natural, so there is, uh, there is a, they, all batteries have a resistance, which means they naturally are discharging all the time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and if they're in a tool, sometimes they can have sleep or activation cycles that may slowly discharge, mm -hmm. that a sleep discharge, if you will. Um, but it's actually ideal to keep a battery 20 to 30% for storage, for any sort of storage, short or long term, is the best thing you can do, and then charge it up as you need it. So what we try to, we try to educate folks, whether that's your cell phone or a power tool. Power tool, when you get home at the end of the day, or you're done with the day packing up your tools, leave them the way they are. If they've been used, don't you don't need to discharge them, but leave them in a lowered state of charge, mm -hmm. um, and then when you come back the next day, use what's left and charge one and, and cycle through those. So you're always better to be between 20 and 80 percent, and actually. It goes back to cell phones. Cell phones, that's one of the worst, uh, you know, I'll ask you a question. When you get home at night, do you put your cell phone on a nightstand or a charger and go to bed and is it on a charger most of the time all night long? It is, yeah. Worst thing you can do for that cell phone. Now, Apple loves you or Samsung loves you because that ages your cell phone very, very fast by doing that. The best thing you can do is when you go home at night for dinner, plug it in for a few minutes. When you're in your car, plug it in for a few minutes. When you're at your office, plug it in. Get those short durations to keep it between 20 and 80, but never a... Try not to allow it to go below 20 and try not to take it above 80 to 100 unless you need it for a specific duration. So I think of those high demand users, if you know you're gonna use that tool for the day, take it to 100%, that's fine. If you know the next day you've got a, a high demand job, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but as a routine, the amount of cycles that you will get out of the battery uh, are different. Um, I, I can tell you I have an iPhone 7 today that I still have over a day and a half of capacity uh, on my cell phone, why? Because my cell phone, I never allow it to go above 80 unless I'm on a trip. Um, and otherwise, it's between 20 and 80%. That's where it stays and where it lives. So all you guys that have been calling babies for always charging your phone all the freaking time. You know, all these tools over here, they have like a cell phone charger. I'm like, what do you need a freaking cell phone charger? Just charge it at night. Be a grown-up. That's right. Plug keep, it in and leave it. Keep your phone charged. Yeah, stop touching it. And But some people have to plug it in everywhere they go. Well, that's big because they were they live from zero to 20 all the time maybe uh, actually what you see is um I, i'd love to say that but what i found most of the time is users have already expended their phone because they've kept it charged all the time they charge it every night to 100 percent, and they mm. use it all the way up during the day yeah see i don't and, and they're killing it off I and so that now between, they need that plug to keep it alive okay so, i keep mine between like 70 and 100 again um the being up on that upper 100% is actually bad. It's better because to be off in that 30 to 70. If you look in the, um, the way that's done, hybrid. So the hybrid vehicles today that are running lithium ion, that's what they do. So in order to guarantee the capacity and guarantee the total capability, they actually operate them. Most of them are 30 to 50%. The big buses yeah. and trucks that are hybrid electric uh, in California and Florida, they're running all over the world. They actually don't use zero to 100%. They use 30 to 50 30 to 70, 20 to 60, they're right there in the middle of that range. So. Is it safe to say, though, that, the, the, that this smart battery is taking care of some of that for me? No, well, again, By they, not allowing me to completely discharge and not allowing me to completely charge. Yes, but they do that again for the cycles that they tell you. Mm -hmm. But I think your users, uh, and uh, I probably shouldn't say this for... You know, it makes it bad for reselling because, uh, you know, for you, that means people are going to buy less batteries because they're going to last longer. They're going to maintain their performance. But frankly, mm -hmm. the best thing you can do, uh, I mean, I have original 5.0 batteries, 3.0 batteries that I've personally checked. Mm -hmm. I've aged about 1% or 2% capacity. 
they're what four and a half years old mm. um, I have friends that have used them they have batteries that they're charging and discharging I'm using mine more and more demanding mm -hmm. but because they put them on a charger every night I've taken them off and checked them and they've lost 10 11 12 13 14 percent so it's mm. orders of magnitude more capacity by keeping them charged up all the time so standard chargers that come with I mean these pretty much nobody buys these because they come very toolkit comes with them but <laughs> 55 bucks for an m12 and I don't see why you would ever buy this you would buy the, the dual, dual yeah the dual right? yeah. Um, uh, the all these chargers they only charge one battery at a time don't at 110 volts coming out of the wall 15 amps don't we have enough to charge two batteries at once why don't they make chargers to charge both um, you know they obviously can do that and there's some that do um, my for what uh, for what I can comment on they do that because a lot of times those batteries, the battery management system that's inside of there needs to charge and discharge the battery as part of the cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're put in there hot, it's got to deal with a hot battery. Mm -hmm. um, so the BMS that's inside there, if you had multiples of those, uh, it just makes it more costly. So mm -hmm. if you look in some of the upper end units, they allow multiple batteries to charge. Mm -hmm. it, it, I would, I'm not speaking for from Milwaukee, but I'm gonna guess that was a way to ensure that they had a dual voltage, dual battery charger, mm -hmm. recognizing that the user may be using one tool or the other. And if they're gonna do more demanding than that, keep, they're gonna do one of the multiple chargers. Circuit, right. Because if not, you gotta have that BMS inside there to monitor every battery. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's gotta have a discharging system inside there that also cools, mm -hmm. helps let the battery discharge so I can use it. Mm -hmm. so. And then they also have a, a car version, 119 bucks of that same thing. Now tell me about what your thoughts are on rapid and supercharging, right? So <laughs> these are higher speed chargers. So the supercharger is, uh, I forget how much this one is. The supercharger is more, let's see, M18, multi-rapid, simultaneous, um, sequential, supercharger, 170 bucks, 169 bucks for the supercharger, which claims to charge you know, in an hour. So to charge an HD 12.0 battery from fully discharged to charge in an hour, where the rapid charger would take two hours or the standard charge would take four. Wouldn't it be better to charge it slower? I, in most, so again, kind of, uh, you know, some uh, how this works most of the time. If you've got the lower capacity batteries, fast charging those can induce more heat. Um, it is a harder cycle on them. Mm -hmm. um, even our cell phones today, you know, the rapid chargers that are available to get you back quick, um, those, has, those have advantages for the usage. So they're nice because you can, you know, rapidly use the phone again. Not nearly in every case, but overall what you'll see is a f the faster charge can have, a, can have an impact of battery life. Um, in some cases, it can actually impact the capacity. So on a smaller battery, if I try to cram, because of how the electrochemistry works, if I try to cram too much charge into it fast, uh, even though they've got smart systems, there are times where it actually isn't filling the capacity all the way up. So mm. uh, think of um, maybe the best analogy is kind of boulders and rocks and sand in a jar. Is uh, you know a, a jar that's a fast charger, I'm just pouring sand in that jar. And I can kind of fill up all that capacity that's there. And there's very little microscopic, you know, air inside there. Yeah, in a standard charger. So yeah, in a standard like, charger. Right. Now, if I go to a faster charger, I'm using kind of, you know, sand and maybe some small rocks mm -hmm. in there. And so I'm, I'm, there's a mix of both of those. So I'm going to have some more air gap. When you think about fast charger, again, it's not a directly attributable, but I'm kind of putting the boulders in there. Yeah. And I'm trying to put some sand in at the end. If it's a smaller capacity, I quickly overfill. So think of a smaller mm -hmm. jar. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fill it with a boulder really quick and not have room. Where the bigger capacity batteries, it's actually better on those. So mm. if you have a 5.0 and above, the fast chargers are ideal because they let you get back to real use. And they're the same as a uh, the, the compact batteries on a standard charger. Does that make sense? Yeah, and you can feel, I mean, just feel the weight difference of this versus the, oh, yeah. these, the internal circuitry on that is gonna be, and it's clearly more sophisticated. Yeah, they're and putting a lot more amperage in to charge those two up. and a half times the cost. Uh, they also make a little USB, a little charger thing that you can use. This is to charge your cell phone. You're talking <laughs> keeping it between 20 and 80%. Uh, so this is for babies, you know, that I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, but this is 29 bucks, they make it an M18. We call those uh, Apple umbilical cords. Yeah, Has he yeah. always got the Apple umbilical cord out with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm a grown up on that. <laughs> And then they make some of these. So I'm excited about these. See, these are sequential chargers, so they charge one at a time. Yeah. So I put loaded up with four batteries. This is the M12 version, which is 99 bucks. Then they make a M18 only version, which is 119 bucks, which will charge uh, what six six batteries at the same time, which is kind of neat. Or or 
six batteries sequentially. And then this one I'm interested in, this one's a couple hundred bucks. This is probably the one I'm gonna put in my cabinet. This is a rapid charger, 199 bucks, and we'll take three of each. I personally actually own that one, ironically. Yeah. Um, um, I know you didn't select it because of that, but I use that one because I use enough of the extended capacity batteries. I don't use the lowest capacity that it's really optimized for those and doesn't cause any of the, again, I don't want to discourage anybody that it causes like significant aging issues, but it really is suited for, you know, those mid to high capacity batteries, which mm -hmm. is what I use most of the time. 5.0 plus. So, yeah. Right, right. And, then, and then the compact, you know, when you talk about the M12s using kind of the 3.0s, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's ideally suited for those. Mm -hmm. And then they have a couple of these like combo kit things. And this, I, I kind of went in, I did a little study just to kind of see what this would save you. Um, for instance, on this particular kit here. So this is a CP 2.0 and then a single M12. Again, I don't think these make a lot of sense because I don't have a single M12. I've thrown every one of these chargers away. <laughs> it's come with, you know, all M12 tools. I always want the, you know, why wouldn't you want the dual? Because yeah. it'd be only if you adopted the 12 volt only ecosystem. And so, uh, but if you did this, if you bought this separately, it would be, uh, so this, if you buy it together, 79 bucks for the kit. Um, but if you bought the charger, which is 55, and you bought the battery, it would be 59. So you're saving, um, it was 114 less 79 bucks, whatever that is. So you're saving yourself 30 bucks uh, by buying the kit if you buy it like this. So if you ever need to buy a charger, my suggestion would be buy one of these kits. You know, like here's an HD 12.0, 249 bucks if you bought this. Uh, but if you bought it separately, it'd be 280. You know, so you save yourself 30, 40 bucks if you're gonna buy one of these. So this is a rapid charger kit. So they make a 12.0, 8.0, 5.0, and CP 3.0 kit. Uh, and they make it with a base charger and then the 8.0 and 12.0. And, 12 uh, and that makes sense, you, what you just said. The higher capacity batteries do better with a rapid charger. And so Milwaukee is obviously letting us know that here by creating a kit with a rapid charger and then a high output battery. Correct. So those chargers are you know, 250, 200, 170, 140. So you have some of these combo kit options that if you ever needed to buy a separate charger, you know, let's say you had two cabinets or you needed an extra one and you needed an extra charger or your charger blew up and you didn't want to buy another kit. I think what most of us do is we just go buy another tool. <laughs> Use it as an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. If, if your charger broke, or you need another battery, you go buy another tool and then you get two batteries and a charger with Hey, honey, I got a bad battery. I, what's the more tool? I needed a battery. It yeah, came right, with it. Right, right. Free and, tool. And then they also make a um, little USB. So here's, again, cell phone, baby, yep. baby cell phone charger here that you could charge off. Hey, there's a great way to make sure that you can get that 20 to 80% all the time. Yeah, you can run a little radio or something <laughs> like that. So anything else um, we missed? Um, the battery stuff... Um, I'm going to I'm going to simplify this a bit. I, I have to stare at this. And so just to kind of cue everybody <laughs> in on what I've done with this. So first step was to figure out what pages of the catalog are batteries and chargers. And then I figured out what do I want to buy? So I bought every one of them. Somehow I missed the dual dual M18 charger, but whatever. I guess I don't need that one. So um, I bought every charger. I bought one of every battery, one of every battery pack. So I have it here physically. And then what I started doing was I go, well, okay, we add up, what are the pricing? What are, the, what are these cost? And then I started considering, well, what is the cost of buying a charger combo? Uh, what is the cost of buying a kit, like a tool with, with batteries? Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll kind of sit down here and I'll unbox all these. I'll have it all in my cabinet. We'll be using them. And then I'll start to sort of develop an expertise around, you know, what's my favorite battery? And then I guess that's of some value to some people wanting to know, you know, what's the favorite battery from the dude who has every single Milwaukee tool made. <laughs> Uh, I got to be one of the few. You know, I, I, th I thought I had a lot personally. In fact, everybody comes in, they're like, "Oh my gosh, do you bleed red?" Yeah. Um, but you know, and you got you went to the M12 and M18. Frankly, um, you know, I started out thinking, "Well, you know, I'm a I'm a horsepower guy. You know, more only output." 18. I'm like only 18. I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, they're so close. But actually, I found I have such a broad mix. I've got M12s. Yep. Some of their M12 tools are absolutely fantastic, and, stubby, and the 18 right. is uh, is is not. It, does, it isn't validated, in my opinion, in the same version. Yeah. And there's some others that, frankly, the M18 versus the M12 in size, the M18 yeah. is better. So I have the dual charges. I have both. Um, I love both of their series. They've been fantastic, frankly. Yeah. So. All right, so check out our other videos. Thanks for watching this uh, this series. I, I guess we'll, we'll see when we've launched this video. I may have, I only have two other sets of tools to finish up. My countertops are almost empty now. 
Um, so we're, we're rounding out the line, but uh, thanks for coming down here from Indiana to kind of help us think through this, uh, adding a lot more value to this conversation. I know this is a batteries are complicated topic, but <laughs> now, you know, the figuring out which to buy and which charger to buy, I'll help you with that. So go to obsessedgarage.com, go to the Milwaukee section. We'll have this all broken out as I build this out day by day, week by week uh, to help uh, figure this stuff out. But, uh, you know, Milwaukee makes some of the best batteries in the market. And um, I'm excited that we're going to have them and have the ability to, to provide them to you. I'll probably provide all of these, but we'll make suggestions on which, you know, which is the best variant, which is the best version. So thanks to Ben for uh, helping us out here, and we'll uh, catch you guys on the next video. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. I don't know too many people that bought every single Milwaukee battery. Well, I'm <laughs> one of them. So hopefully that gives me some validity here. So I'll catch you on the next one.